Hey guys, hope you're well. Uh, this video is just a reminder to you all to not rely on your assumed knowledge and that often the information provided in a question is enough to solve the question itself. If we go to question one, now just at a glance, this does look like a, an organic chemistry question, but in actual fact, it's just following a pattern or a bunch of rules. I'll explain. So, question one. In these two pairs of alternative uh, carbocations, which is the more stable in each pair? So, essentially what they're asking is, if we were to compare P and Q versus, oh, so P and Q, and we were to compare R and S, of those two, which one is more stable? Okay, so which is stable? Uh, which is the most stable out of P and Q, which is more stable out of R and S. So let's not use our, any assumed knowledge, okay? If you look for the keywords stability or stable, you can see that it is mentioned above. Okay, it's mentioned above. So let's have a read, because essentially they're going to explain to us, you know, which ones are more stable. Starting here, in the first carbocation, the positively charged carbon is attached to three other carbons, which between them have nine hydrogens attached. Okay, so let's go through this and I'll kind of highlight as we go. The positively charged uh, carbon is attached to three other carbons, we'll use triangles, which between them have nine hydrogens attached. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of these hyperconjugations, I guess explain what hyperconjugations are, two hydrogen induce negative charge onto the respective carbon atoms, which stabilizes the C plus. That's the important thing. All of these bonds stabilize the, the carbocation. In the second carbon carbocation, the positively charged carbon, which is this guy, is attached to only one other carbon, it's a triangle, which only or which has only one hydrogen capable of induction and that's this one on the bottom here okay so hence why we've got nine versus one so in the example above out of the two the left hand uh, molecule is more stable because it's got nine hyperconjugations whatever they are versus one on the other side so in question one we can actually use these rules, we apply these rules, and we can therefore uh, realize, or figure out, which one is the more stable. Okay, so if we go down to, uh, if we go down to question one, and you look at P, right, we have to follow the same rules. Looking at the, the carbon that's positively charged, in P you can see there are three neighboring carbons. And then on those carbons, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven hydrogens directly attached to those neighboring carbons. Okay, so we can say that there are seven, what we call hyperconjugations to P. And if you go to Q, the middle carbon here, the, the one with the positive charge, in this case, uh, oh, it also has three neighboring carbons. However, if you count the number of hydrogens attached to them, we've got three on the bottom here. We've only got the one over here, so one. And on the top left, we have two, these guys. So if you count them all up, it's only six. So the one that has more hyperconjugations, in this case P, is going to be the more stable. Okay, so P is the more stable out of those two. That's the one that's more stable. Now I've just pre-drawn the other molecules R and S and we'll just do the same thing, okay? If we go to R, C plus, that's the middle. Let's look at the neighboring carbons. It's only got two neighboring carbons. And if we count those, we have three here and we've got just the one over there. So that's a total of four hyperconjugations. If we go to molecule S, C plus, 
this has three neighboring carbons. We've got three carbons here, three hydrogens here, and we've got two over here. So in total, that's eight. So again, the more hyperconjugations, the more stable. And so in this case, S is the more stable out of the two. So our answer is P and S. C. So let's reflect for a moment. At the end of the day, there's very little organic chemistry that you actually needed to know. It was just a matter of counting certain types of bonds and following rules. That's it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Hope this helps. See you later, guys.